Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai Bahasham, Rachahakwarash. Double honors to the apostles, the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. And as always, we give peace and salutations unto the elect. And I wanted to do this video uh, dealing with Isaiah, the 19th chapter. Um, you know, in particular, around the 23rd to 25th verse, you know, dealing with uh, Egypt and Assyria being the Lord's people. All right. Which is a parable. All right. And the servants, the prophets are the only ones who have received the secrets. All right. Um, in these latter days. All right. And it's a stumbling block. All right. That Christians are now using. Ironically, Christians are using the Old Testament. All right. Uh, for the purpose of um, proving that all nations are God's people. All nations are a part of the covenant. All nations, you know, uh, will have the laws written. And all nations are beloved of the Heavenly Father, which is not true. All right. Now, as we teach the kingdom of heaven, which is the throne of David being established in earth. And that right there lets you know the, the fact that it's the throne of David. All right. And the tabernacle of David is being built as in the days of old. All right. Which is a prophecy in Amos, the ninth chapter. That right there lets you know all nations cannot be saved. All right. Because David, okay, in his throne, subdued the heathen nations. And that's what Yahweh Shai is coming to do. Okay. But um, ironically, like I said, Christians are going into the Old Testament, which we know that Christians only use the Bible. All right. For the purpose of saying you can eat what you want to eat. Okay. Um, you don't have to keep the laws um, that God loves everybody. All right. And that. The Heavenly Father's promise unto Abraham, his seed, Isaac, his seed, and Jacob, and his seed is uh, null and void. All right. That promise is no longer. And now you have a multi-nation covenant, okay, that has uh, overdone what the Lord promised unto his people. All right. And they're failing miserably. All right. But this is their latest scripture, which, um, you know, I remember going through this in around 20 13 2014 i did one on my own and then i did one with the elder ariella all right no other camp nobody did videos on this because i remember looking it up when uh, i ran across it I, I i checked the internet to see if there were breakdowns on it okay and uh youtube in particular and no one was speaking on it all right you've never went up to a christian and they've talked about isaiah the 19th chapter period all right but now that they feel they have a point Okay, uh, which you see this video before you, they feel that, that now they have a point in the argument. Now they want to go into Isaiah, the 19th chapter. Well, go into the whole chapter, okay, and not just the point that you feel works for you. Go through the whole thing. We have, we always do. That's one of our go-to chapters, okay? But if you believe, uh, uh, and now you want to go into the Old Testament dealing with Isaiah, well, there's a whole hell of a lot in Isaiah that needs to be addressed. And these are the things we constantly bring up. And the Israelites constantly have to, uh, you know, defend the gospel. We constantly have to answer this. We constantly have to answer that. All right. But you Christians haven't answered a damn thing. And this video is off of Vocab Malone's page. Okay. And as you can see, the title, Sakari avoids Isaiah 19 at all costs. All right. So he walked upon him. And, um, you know, now they have this uh, new epiphany dealing with Isaiah, the 19th chapter, which, as I said, Christians never went into these scriptures until the Israelites came onto the scene. The Christians never talked about who Esau was, the Edomites. They never went into these things until the Israelites came onto the scene. But now they have a new uh, scripture um, dealing with Isaiah, the 19th chapter. And this is a uh, vocab Malone, you know, coming and questioning these uh, men about the scripture. And I'm uh, assuming from reading the comments, you know, they, they didn't have the answer. They didn't break it down or they didn't address it. All right. And um, before we get started in this lesson, I'm going to um, show you all. This is a video me and the elder Ariala did on this. This goes back to about 2015. Um, I did one in 2014 as well, but that one's no longer on the Internet. But this one, uh, brothers uh, reloaded it. And the recent brother to reload it is um, the uh, brother Karatas off from Vegas. Make sure you subscribe to his page. Jim as Vegas sit downs 144k always doing edifying videos he reloaded this video understand Isaiah 19 Egypt and Assyria my people Jim as Dallas reload okay so this is a video 
which Lord willing, I'll remember to put it in um, the description box. And then um, recently, and a lot of apostles and elders are going into it now as well, and brothers um, are speaking on it. Um, I uh, also did a, a response to this guy. All right, uh, this is the ex Sakari member. He went to Sonetta TV. Now, then he went to Vocab Malone. It could be an agent, who knows? Um, but either way it goes, he he's off. All right, uh, Vocab's off. All right, but this is a video on my page. Um, Nigerians or Africans, Isaiah the nineteenth. Chapter 21 through 25. All right. So I address some of those points as well going into this very topic here. All right. So today I just wanted to go into it and uh, Lord willing, we can get some edification dealing with Isaiah, the 19th chapter. OK. Um, now, to start at the top to get, you know, context of this whole chapter, this is a prophecy. OK. And what does it say? The burden of Egypt. OK, message to Egypt. Now, we know in prophecy, Babylon, the great is a spiritual Egypt. All right. And it's also a uh, hub of captivity for the Israelites in the latter days. OK, they will be delivered out of a spiritual Egypt. All right. This time. All right. But that's another lesson for another time. But it says the burden of Egypt. Behold, the Lord rideth upon a swift cloud and shall come into Egypt and all the idols of Egypt shall move, shall be moved at his presence. All right. And the heart of Egypt shall melt in the midst of it. All right. And he's talking about all these cruel things he's going to do to the Egyptians. All right. How they're going to be in disarray. They're going to seek to their idols. All right. And, and, and they're going to fall. They're not going to prosper. You know, and the Lord's going to deliver his people out of this spiritual Egypt. There will be no work for Egypt. OK. Now we're going to go. We'll start here. Uh, at the verse 17 and then we'll read down into that uh, scripture that is now being used by Christians <laughs> and like I said break down the whole thing we have we have whole lessons on Isaiah the 19th chapter but if you believe in Isaiah the 19th chapter we'll break down Isaiah the 47th chapter Isaiah the 63rd chapter okay all of the uh, the, the books in Isaiah com confound your religion alright but you find something that you think can be used and I, and I always say this okay if you have 30 scriptures that support one narrative all right but then you find one that you think all right contradicts the the narrative then it's a parable all right then it's a dark sand then it's something you have to uh have the spirit of discernment to understand all right because the most high is not the altar of confusion okay the whole book is not about saving the israelites all right but then somehow some way the heathen could also receive of that same salvation. No. OK, the heathen. All right. Uh, their blessing will be the Israelites under Yahweh, the throne of David being established after they serve their hardcore captivity and the Edomites be destroyed. Yes, the heathen will be able to enjoy uh, the, the, the fruits of a righteous uh, rulership. And if they go off. OK, the scriptures give a very, very uh, clear indicator that they will be punished. All right. As a matter of fact, since now Egypt are the people of the Lord and, 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 and they'll be blessed along with the Israelites. Let's get this in Isaiah, the, uh, the Zechariah, the 14th chapter really quick. OK, and um, make this point. All right, because the Bible gives the role of the Egyptians in the kingdom of heaven and the heathen. They will not be on the same level in salvation with the Israelites. They won't uh, uh, be blessed as the Israelites with new bodies. Okay, in the, the new covenant. No. Okay. The throne of David will be established. All right. This is Zechariah 14 and 17. All right. As a matter of fact, I start at 16. It says, and it shall come to pass that every one that is left of all the nations which came up against Jerusalem shall even go from one year. All right. To year. All right. To worship the king, the Lord, Yahweh, the Lord of hosts. All right. And to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. So this is speaking of the kingdom of heaven, man. Okay. Well, let's keep going. And it shall be that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth to Jerusalem to worship the king. All right. The Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. They're going to be punished if they don't keep our laws. All right. The, 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 the earth. All right. Will uh, be under 
the law, statutes, and commandments. All right, starting at Jerusalem, that will be the law of the whole entire earth. So you will have to follow our holiness, just like here, Easter, Halloween, Christmas, or shoved down your throat. Okay, well, in the kingdom of heaven, our holy days, all right, which are uh, linked directly to the heavenly father through his son will be celebrated in the earth and you will have to do it. All right. And if you don't, and it so be that who will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. Okay, this is in the Bible. And if the family of Egypt... Go not up. Okay, I bet you I bet you no Christian's gonna go into this. Oh, that's the old testament then. That already happened. You bring this up. Alright. And if the family of Egypt go not up and come not that have no rain, alright, there shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite the heathen that come not up to keep the feast of tabernacles. Let's read this in the uh in a new Living translation NLT it says if the people of Egypt refuse to attend the festival, okay, the Lord will punish them with the same plague he sends on the other nations who refuse to go. All right. They ain't gonna have any rain. <laughs> okay. This shall be the punishment of Egypt, okay, and the punishment of all the nations that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles, man. In that day. All right. Shall there be upon bells of the horses holiness unto the Lord? All right. Which that's the priesthood being established, man. After the order of Melchizedek and pots in the Lord's house shall be like the bowls before the altar. All right. Yea, every pot in Jerusalem and in Judah. All right. All 12 tribes together shall be holiness unto the Lord. Yahweh of hosts and all they that sacrifice shall come and take of them. And see therein, okay, which are the Israelites, in that day there shall be no more Canaanite, all right, in the house of Yahweh, the Lord of hosts, all right. And this is not talking about, okay, uh, uh, at the time of Joshua and Caleb when we were in. No, this is a future prophecy, okay. We, we never really fully set up, all right, a shop, all right, to where we established a uh, 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 a kingdom until Solomon okay and that was only 40 years of peace all right which was a prelude to what's coming so right here the family of Egypt okay uh, uh is is prophesied to be in subjection to the Israelites and punished if they don't follow the laws okay so we got that out of the way all right we got that out of the way so going back to Isaiah the 19th chapter all right um I start at uh, 17 and then we'll read down. It says, and the land of Judah shall be a terror unto Egypt. Okay. Everyone that make it mentioned thereof shall be afraid in himself because of the counsel of the Lord of hosts, which you have determined against it. Okay. And this is uh, uh, Judah being raised up. All right. In these latter days. All right. The prophets. All right. Which would lead to all 12 tribes awakening and being gathered. Okay. And then you're going to have our people lose their damn minds. OK, but the last thing this country wanted to see was uh, Judah raise up. All right. They, they, they this, it's, it actually it absolutely puts them in fear. All right. It says in that day shall five cities in the land of Egypt. All right. Which Israel are in a spiritual Egypt speak the language of Canaan. All right. We're going to stand on our feet like a great army. All right. We're going to have that mindset we had on our way. All right. To the land of Canaan. All right. And we're going to come back to the true understanding of the language. OK. Of our fathers, man. OK. We're going to speak the pure Hebrew. OK. Now, are we speaking it a hundred percent? Can we fluently speak it? And no, that's not what that's talking about. But this is a sign that the Israelites are coming back to the heavenly father. This is prophecy. When you see the Israelites. OK, uh, 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 awakening within a spiritual Egypt, man, and swear to the Lord of hosts, one shall be called the city of destruction. All right. And this is what's going to happen to this uh, spiritual Egypt is going to be destroyed because it's Babylon the great. 
Okay, Revelation the 18th chapter. All right, and that day shall there be an altar, all right, to Yahweh in the midst of the land of Egypt. Okay, and that altar is where the Israelites, the remnant, are making their bodies a living sacrifice, starting with the servants, the prophets. Okay, and a pillar at the border, all right, thereof unto the Lord. Okay, and it shall be for a sign and a witness unto the Lord of hosts in the land of Egypt. All right, for they shall cry unto Yahweh because of the oppressor, and he shall send them a savior and a great one, and he shall deliver them. All right, so when did this happen? This is going to happen in this new Egypt, man. But Esau is the end of the world. Esau is that new Pharaoh. He's the oppressor. All right, that's why in Joel, the third chapter, really quick, Joel, the third chapter, says what? Egypt shall be, the 19th verse, Egypt shall be a desolation and Edom shall be a desolate wilderness for the violence against the children of Judah. All right, because they have shed innocent blood in their land, but Judah shall dwell forever in Jerusalem from generation to generation. Proof this is speaking of end times. Okay, Judah didn't dwell all right, forever. Jerusalem, all 12 tribes weren't together from generation to generation from this point on. No. Okay, there were more captivities. Okay, but this is speaking of end time prophecy. But Egypt is synonymous with Edom because Edom run this modern day egypt that the israelites are held captive all right in, in in large amounts both northern and southern kingdom so going back okay isaiah the 19th chapter and the 21st verse all right and the lord shall be known to egypt and the egyptians shall know the lord in that day and shall do sacrifice and oblation all right. Now show me in the scriptures where any heathen nation, all right, were in charge of doing sacrifices unto the heavenly father, man, and offering oblations. No, this is speaking of the Israelites. And we're going to prove it. OK. Yea, they shall vow a vow unto the Lord and perform it. All right. As we just read earlier in the chapter. OK. There's going to be an altar unto the Lord in the midst of the land of Egypt. OK, and what happened to the Israelites? The heavenly father turned his back on us, man, because what we followed after the idols of these heathen nations, man. All right. And this final captivity is known as a spiritual Egypt. All right. And let's get an example of the heavenly father calling the Israelites after a name of a particular uh, 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 place in the earth. All right. Synonymous with behaviors of that place. This is Isaiah one and ten. Hear the word of the Lord, ye rulers of Sodom. Okay, give ear unto the law of your God, ye people of Gomorrah. All right, now why is the Lord saying this? Because the Israelites, all right, were acting like the heathen. Okay, so he's calling them Sodom and Gomorrah, man. Okay, that's why the Lord said, and, and, and left, unless the Lord have left a uh, very small remnant, all right, we would be likened unto Sodom and Gomorrah. Okay, so when you go to this chapter, okay, this is speaking of the Israelites, okay, whom the Lord said in the place where it was said unto them, ye are not my people. All right, let's get that in the book of Hosea. Okay, Hosea, the uh, first chapter. This is the Israelites coming back to the Heavenly Father, nothing more, nothing less, okay. Hosea 1 and 9, then said, God, call his name, Lo, I'm me. All right. For ye are not my people and I will not be your God. And that's what happened. All right. The Lord divorced the nation of Israel. We, we weren't his people. All right. At a point. But in the latter days, through an awakening. All right. In a spiritual Egypt, as well as the different captivities where we're scattered. OK, he's now showing favor on us and it's only going to lead to a greater glory. Hosea 1 and 10. Yet. OK, shall the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, ye are not my people. All right. There it shall be said unto them, ye are the sons of the living God. All right. We became Gentiles carried away of dumb idols, but a remnant are going to turn from those idols. OK. And, and what is it going to be said? 
you were you, in the place where it was said, "Ye are not my people." There shall it be said unto them, Ye are the sons of the living God. All right. Then shall the children of Judah and the children of Israel be gathered together and appoint themselves one head, and they shall come up out of the land. But great shall be the day of Jezreel, which is the seed of the power, all right, which is the remnant of the, of the nation of Israel. Okay. So going back, okay, this is speaking of the Israelites in this spiritual Egypt. All right, making their bodies a living sacrifice. It's jumping in and out of of, of time periods, and that's what prophecy does. All right, it, it's meant to make people stumble, especially written in the English language. It's written for you to stumble. All right, to keep a, a particular people out of the inner court. All right, so as you keep going, and we'll we'll read through it again. But let's keep going. It says, and the Lord shall smite Egypt. OK, because a lot of our people are going to be judged, as the scriptures say, in the land. <laughs> All right. Uh, two parts therein shall die. OK, he shall smite and heal it. All right. Because the third shall be left therein. OK, and this is speaking in the land of Egypt, which is Babylon, the great. OK, two parts therein shall die. All right. All right, but the third will be healed. He's going to come with healing in his wings. OK, he shall smite and heal it. OK, now break the whole thing down. Don't just read. All right. Uh, one part of this highway, which will get it. And then uh, no, read the whole thing and break the whole thing down. All right, let's read it again. And the Lord shall smite Egypt. OK. And he shall smite and heal it. OK. And he shall even return and they shall return even to Yahweh. And that's that remnant. All right. We're going to be healed and he shall be entreated of them. All right. And he sh and shall heal them. All right. And that's happening now. We're entreating our Lord. OK. So as you keep going, it says in the in that day, there shall be a highway out of Egypt to Assyria. And the Assyrian shall come into Egypt and the Egyptian to Assyria and the Egyptian shall serve with the Assyrians. All right. Now, let's deal with this. First of all, we're going to go to the book of Isaiah. All right. Now, I typed in Egypt and Assyria. All right. And there may be particular points that I didn't make here that I made, you know, in uh, this video. All right. Or, or in this video. But um, it is what it is. I just typed in Egypt and Assyria. So we're going to go through these scriptures as well to prove to you that it's speaking of, of captivity. All right. Speaking of the Israelites who would be in a hardcore captivity that's likened unto Assyria and Egypt. OK. And the Assyrians were known for their uh, hardcore army, man. The Romans studied the Assyrian army. You see. Egypt is a place of hardcore captivity for the Israelites. So these things got to be taken spiritually to understand what the Heavenly Father is saying. All right. So we're going to go to Isaiah, the 11th chapter. OK. And what does it say? The restored remnant, Isaiah 11 and 11. And then we'll jump down. It shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people. All right. Now, in the prior chapter, it tells you that the remnant is Israel. OK, a remnant of Israel shall return. As a matter of fact. Why not just read it? All right. I started. Uh, 21, just to get the point, the remnant shall return, even um, the remnant of Jacob unto the mighty God. All right. For though. Thy people Israel be as the sand of the sea, yet a remnant of them shall return. All right. The consumption decree shall be overflowed with righteous. The promise he made unto Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Watch this. For the Lord of hosts shall make a consumption. All right. Even determined in the midst of the land. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God of hosts, O my people that dwellest in Zion, be not afraid of the Assyrian. He shall smite thee with a rod. All right. We, we, we going to get judged. All right. He shall lift up his staff against thee after the manner of Egypt. All right. Meaning we're going to be in a hardcore captivity. 
all right but the heavenly father is going to destroy this place and deliver us yet for yet a very little while and the indignation shall cease in mine anger and their destruction so the lord is going to use these heathen to come up against us all right but he's going to destroy their asses man but he, in particular here he's speaking of the edomite in spirit who's like it unto the assyrian and the lord used the assyrians to put hell on us man okay he used the egyptians to enslave us okay but right here egypt and assyria are linked so that's a narrative we have to continue to keep our eye on all right you can keep reading down all right but um for the sake of the lesson which is going to go back to isaiah the 11 chapter reading about the remnant restored man all right the lord it shall come to pass in that day that the lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people which shall be left from assyria and from egypt okay and from Patros and from Cush and from Elam and from Shinar and from Hamath and from the isles of the islands of the sea. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather the, together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. All right. It's all about Judah and Israel, Judah and Ephraim. Sometimes it's Judah and Jerusalem. OK, the the the, the kingdom. All right. The house of David, all 12 tribes, which have been split. OK, and rent. All right. As a nation. All right. Starting with the Assyrians. OK, the uh, northern kingdom went into the Assyrian captivity and the southern kingdom went into a Babylonian captivity, man. And from that point, we've been uh, split as a nation, man. OK, really going back to Solomon. OK. Now. This is a future prophecy, so let's jump down, okay, to verse 16, all right? And we can read the rest of that as well. You read that on your own, okay? But let's go to verse 16. And there shall be a highway for the remnant of his people, okay, which shall be left from Assyria like as it was to Israel in the day that he came up out of the land of Egypt, all right? That chariot, speaking of the chariot. OK, and that highway is freedom. OK, to be separated from our enemies. OK, let's get the word. Ma, sa, la, ma, sa, la. All right. Or masala. Interesting. Now, when you go to um, the word, it's a highway raised away public road. All right. When you go to the root. All right. Salal. All right. To lift up. All right. And we know that we're going to be lifted up. OK, we're going to be lifted up, cast up, exalted, cast up a highway, cast up to lift up of song. All right. To exalt. All right. Esteem highly prize to exalt oneself. OK, so the Lord is going to lift up a standard, man. OK, and there's going to be a way for the israelites the remnant to escape okay that's what that highway is speaking of man now let's go to a few other scriptures that use highway so we can get an understanding okay let's see here proverbs this is proverbs chapter 16 and 17 the highway of the upright is to depart from evil all right he that keepeth his way preserveth his soul all right and that's what the remnant will be doing they will be making their bodies a living sacrifice all right in their final captivity okay so this highway is speaking of absolute uh, uh um deliverance man this is uh isaiah 40 and third and three all right so lucky isaiah 40 and three all right, I'm thinking too much and getting ahead of myself. All right. It says the voice of him that cried in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. OK. And John the Baptist did that. OK. He 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 gave the understanding of Yahawashai. All right. Which is our highway to the heavenly father, man. All right. Starting with this truth. All right. So the highway 
Okay? As a matter of fact, let's see if there's any more. I'm going to just leave it at that. The highway, okay, going back here, Isaiah, the 19th chapter, all right, verse 23, it says, In that day shall there be a highway out of Egypt to Assyria. Now, is this speaking of a highway that's going to be built in the latter days so that people can, can uh, walk out of Egypt to get to Assyria? No. All right, this is spiritual. It's all spiritual, man. Okay, it's a stumbling block, and we love it. But it's just so ironic and funny that Christians, all of a sudden, using Isaiah 19 and 23, want to start banging in the Old Testament. Oh, really? <laughs> so break the whole thing down. Don't just, you know, the, what, what does it mean that he, the, the, the Egypt his people? No, break it. You break it down. Okay, the whole chapter. In that day, there should be a highway out of Egypt to Assyria, and the Assyrian shall come into Egypt, all right, and the Egyptian into Assyria, and the Egyptians shall serve with the Assyrians, all right? So what we're going to do is we're going to go here where I just typed in the blue letter Egypt and Assyria, and we'll go back and finish the rest of the chapter. But I want to get these precepts, all right, that are going to give you a understanding of spiritually what egypt and assyria is referring to and you have to know these precepts in order to fully get it all right now let's read this in uh, jeremiah 2 and 18 then we'll get a few others it says and now what hast thou done all right what hast thou to do in the way of egypt to drink the waters of sihor all right and what has thou to do in the way of assyria to drink the waters of the river meaning they were going into the idols of this these different captivities man okay the same gods and Syria is in the uh, region of um, you know Mesopotamia Babylon okay now even unto this day you have the likes of Sodnet or our people are heavy into the customs of Egypt man it's like a, a, a connection they have with it that they're, they refuse to let go okay the same thing the idols of Babylon Okay, uh, Christmas. Okay, that all goes back to uh, Mesopotamia, Babylon, which Assyria, all right, is within that region. Okay, verse 36 in Jeremiah 2 it says, Why gaddest thou about so much to change thy way? Thou shalt also be ashamed of Egypt as thou was ashamed of Assyria. Okay, so this is speaking of our people going in, into those ways, man. All right, Hosea 7 and 11. Ephraim is also like a silly dove without heart. They call to Egypt. They go to Assyria. They trust in these different gods. Okay, <laughs> Hosea 9 and 3. They shall not dwell in the Lord's land, but Ephraim shall return to Egypt. They shall eat unclean things in Assyria. When did Ephraim ever go back to Egypt? When did Ephraim ever go back to Assyria? All right, it tells you after they left that Assyrian captivity, all right, they came over here to the Americas. Okay, that's in the book of Second Edges, the thirteenth chapter. There's no record of the, the the Ephraim, the Northern Kingdom, going back to Egypt and Assyria. This is spiritually speaking of this captivity. Okay, and they're over here, and Ephraim loves that damn swine, man. All of the tribes, but Ephraim, it's like a religion. Jake too, all all of the tribes, but Ephraim loves them that damn swine, man. Now, let's go up here to Isaiah, the 27th chapter, and we'll go to the, uh, <laughs> let's see here, we'll go to the uh, 13th verse, all right, I'll just hit the point, it says, and it shall come to pass in that day that a great trumpet shall be blown. And what is that great trumpet? All right. That's your all right. When you get Matthew, the 24th chapter, it tells you, all right, that he's going to uh, come and blow a great trumpet. OK, um, the trumpet of an archangel, man. OK, as a matter of fact. Because we're going to be delivered from Babylon, the great, as well as these various different captivities where we'll be scattered. All right. But. Egypt, Babylon, and Great will be the main deliverance. All right, this is uh, Matthew 24 and 31. 
and they shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to another. All right. And the elect are the Israelites. OK, so this trumpet is speaking of deliverance, man. OK, here's the point. And it shall come to pass in that day. All right. That the great trumpet shall be blown and they shall come. All right. Which were ready to perish in the land of Assyria. All right. And the outcast in the land of Egypt. And shall worship Yahweh in the holy uh, mount at Jerusalem. All right. And once we're established there, if the true natural Egyptian. All right. Doesn't want to uh, uh, come up to the Feast of Tabernacles. His ass is going to be punished, showing you they won't have the new covenant. But here's the point here. And they shall come, which were ready to perish in the land of Assyria. All right. Meaning we're in a hardcore captivity in the outcast in the land of Egypt. Which we just read in Isaiah the 11th chapter that what the outcast of Israel. OK, he's going to assemble. All right. The outcast of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. OK. So this is speaking of the Israelites who are in captivity being delivered, man. And we would be catching hell because as the scriptures say, he will wear out the saints. All right. Now, is Assyria and Egypt the only two nations where the Israelites are going to be? Hell no. The Israelites are scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. But right here is just saying Egypt and Assyria because these are two captivities for the Israelites. And it can also be likened unto Judah and Ephraim as well. And the outcast in the land of Egypt and shall worship Yahweh in the holy mount at Jerusalem. And Jerusalem is going to be established above all of the nations on the earth all right this is going to be the top government where the law will be issued forth man so that's that let's go back to the drawing board okay let's go to hosea 11 and 11 all right as a matter of fact we'll pull that up now before we read the point let's go up in the chapter so we can get a little context OK, this is Hosea 11 and one. And why did God, all right, or the most high always, you know, yearn and, 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 and be angry with Israel? Idol worship. What that's what made him turn his uh, face on us, man. OK, and, and, and stop showing us favor. All right. We were likened unto an adulterous whore, man. So he took his name off of us. And that's when we became Gentiles and heathen. All right. We were called a heathen in the New Testament, right? It says, and as they called them, so they went from them. They sacrificed unto Balaam and burned incense to graven images. All right. Even unto this day, our people are worshiping. All right. And sacrificing to the gods of the heathen and particularly the gods of those Hamites, man. Going back to Sumeria, you know, Egypt, Canaan. You know, all of these various different uh, uh, heathen were anti-Messiah, man. And those are the same gods that rule in this world. The gods of Assyria, the gods of Egypt. All right. It says, I taught Ephraim also to go, taking them by their arms. All right. But they knew not that I healed them. And that's our people's uh, mindset. All right. They have no reverence towards the heavenly father, man. All right. Now, as you read down. It says, I drew them with cords of a man with bands of love and was to them as they that take off the yoke of their jaws. All right. And I laid meat unto them. All right. Our people. All right. Uh, uh, ultimately, didn't want to be under the yoke of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. OK, they, they look to these other idols because our people look at. All right. Uh, doing what's right as a, a, a burden. OK. So it says he shall not return into the land of Egypt. All right. But the Assyrian shall be his king because they refuse to return. Meaning the Lord is going to put us back in captivity. All right. Let's read this in the NLT so we can get a better understanding of what it's saying. All right. It says, but since my people ref uh, uh, refuse to return to me, they will return to Egypt and will be forced to serve Assyria. All right. It says, will they not return to Egypt and will not 
uh, Assyria rule over them because they refuse to repent. Okay. So this is basically the Heavenly Father. Okay. Speaking of putting our people in a hardcore captivity, which that would be the final captivity. All right. Let's keep reading. Okay. It says, um, and the sword shall abide in the cities and shall consume his branches and devour them because of their own counsels. All right. And this is speaking of what the Lord would do to the Israelites. But then as you keep reading, it talks about the mercy that he's going to have, man. And my people are, uh, are bent to backsliding from me, though they, uh, they called them to the most high. None at all will exalt him. And that's our people. All right. And as you read down. All right. It's going into, you know, because Ephraim absolutely went left. All right. The, the, they didn't have one king. All right. That did good. You know, after the split at the time of uh, Solomon, you know, with, uh, with uh, Rehoboam and Jeroboam. All right. Jeroboam was up over the uh, northern kingdom, which is Ephraim. They all went left. Okay, now, as you read down, he's talking about how he's not going to completely, you know, destroy us. All right. Let's go to verse 10, Hosea 11 and 10. All right. They shall walk after the Lord. He shall roar like a lion when he shall roar. All right. Then the children shall tremble from the west. All right. Speaking of deliverance, they shall tremble as a bird out of Egypt and as a dove out of the land of Assyria. And I will place them in their houses, saith the Lord. You see that this is speaking of end time prophecy. All right. They're going to tremble as a bird out of Egypt. All right. What does the scripture say in Isaiah, the 31st chapter? So we're getting. Scriptures and precepts, all right, line up on line, precept upon precept to give you an understanding of what is meant. Okay, let's get Isaiah, the 37th chapter, the 31st chapter, all right, and we'll start at the fifth verse. As birds flying, so will Yahweh defend Jerusalem. Defending also, he will deliver it, and passing over, he will preserve it, all right, it's going to be another Passover. All right. This word in the Hebrew is Pesach, which is Passover. All right. The, the second coming of who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ is going to be likened unto a Passover. All right. As birds flying. All right. As the scriptures say, behold, he cometh with clouds. All right. He's going to deliver the Israelites in this time. Turn ye. All right. Unto him whom the children of Israel have deeply revolted. For in, in, in that day, every man shall cast away his idols of his silver and his idols of gold. All right. Which are ultimately the idols of Egypt, the idols of Assyria, the idols of Babylon, the idols of Rome <laughs> in this spiritual Egypt. All right. Which is the mother of all harlots. All right. It says, then shall the Assyrian fall with the sword. Not of a mighty man. And the, and the sword, not of a mean man, shall devour him, but he shall flee from the sword, and his young men shall be discomfited. All right? And he shall pass over to this stronghold for fear, and his princes shall be afraid of the ensign. All right? Save the Lord, whose fire is in Zion, and his furnace is in Jerusalem. This is speaking of the second coming of who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. It says they're going to be afraid of of the ensign the ensign is Yahawashai, okay the book of uh revelation the sixth chapter says when Yahawashai returns you know these heathen are going to be you know the rich men and the elite they're going to be hiding in those bunkers you know f uh, uh scared of the 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 the, the great day of the lord they're going to be fearful man all right but it, it likens all right that deliverance all right to the assyrian falling man Okay, which the modern day Assyrian are the Edomites. Okay, one of the characteristics that they take from the Assyrians is their military, which the Romans studied the Assyrians. Very spiritual. All right, and you can look that up 
to see if I'm lying or not. All right. So let's go to another precept. Okay. Zechariah, the 10th chapter. Okay. Which this is a beautiful chapter. All right. God will bless Judah and Ephraim, which are the 12 tribes of Israel who were scattered and rent. All right. Being brought back together. Which is a fulfillment of the tabernacle of David. Okay. Which that's what is getting ready to be set up in the earth. No matter how much you try with these antics. All right. The Lord is coming to establish the throne of David on earth as it is in heaven. All right. Now, I'm going to just jump to the point for the sake of time. All right. Uh, let's see here. We'll start at 10. All right. Zechariah 10 and 8. Start at eight. It says, I will hiss for them and gather them for I have redeemed them and they shall increase as they have uh, increased. All right. And I will sow them among the people and they shall remember me in far countries. That's what's happening now. All right. And they shall live with their children and turn again. That's happening in this time. All right. Clearly end time prophecy, right? I will bring them again also out of the land of Egypt and will gather them out of Assyria. Okay. But this chapter is speaking of Judah and Ephraim, as you can see, Joseph. All right. Uh, 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 verse six. And I will strengthen the house of Judah and I will save the house of Joseph and I will bring them again to place them. Okay. For I will uh, have mercy upon them. And they shall be as though I had not cast them off. All right. See, when he cast them off, they became heathen. All right. A worshiping all of these different idols, but a remnant will return. For I am Yahweh, their God, and I will hear them. So this is speaking of Judah and Ephraim. Okay. Judah and Ephraim being brought back to the heavenly father, man. But as you go down. All right. Zechariah 10 and 10. Okay, I will bring them again out of the land of Egypt and will gather them out of Assyria. So this is also synonymous with Judah and Ephraim, man. And I will bring them into the land of Gilead and Lebanon. All right. And, and place shall not be found, shall not be found for them. And he shall pass through the sea with affliction. The world, the people are going to catch hell and shall smite the waves in the sea. All right. And all the deeps of the river shall dry up all of their wisdom. And the pride of Assyria shall be brought down and the scepter of Egypt shall depart away. Egypt and Assyria are synonymous here again of a hardcore captivity that the Israelites would be in in the latter days. This is why Revelation 11 calls this a spiritual Egypt. Babylon the Great, Babylon and Assyria were pretty much in the same region. Okay, so this is also Assyria the Great. OK, and I will strengthen them in the Lord and they shall walk up and down. All right. In his name, saith the Lord. All right. And this is going to happen in a future. All right. This is a future prophecy. OK, so as we go back to Isaiah, the 19th chapter. OK, let's go back. Let's read it again. All right. Now that we have that understanding. We're going to go through, all right, the whole thing, all right, and break it down. All right, Isaiah 19 and 21, and the Lord shall be known to Egypt, and the Egyptians shall know the Lord in that day, all right, and shall do sacrifice and oblation, yea, they shall vow a vow unto the Lord and perform it, okay, that remnant, okay, just like Paul called himself a, a, a Roman, OK, he will really be an Israelite, the Israelites. All right. Just like the Lord uh, 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 called them Sodom and Gomorrah. All right. Well, there will be a point where we would be called Egyptians, man. Just another cold word for the Israelites. All right. Who were in a heathen like state. OK, and that's the tabernacle of David. We're going to receive mercy. OK, the mercies of David, man. Wherein we don't deserve it because of our doings. We really don't deserve it. But the Lord has put a spirit on us to return. And offer up our bodies as a living sacrifice in these latter days, man. 
All right. It says. And the Lord shall smite Egypt. He shall smite and heal it. OK. And shall return and they shall return even unto the Lord. All right. And he shall be entreated of them. All right. And shall heal them. And this is what's happening in these latter days, man. All right. But we know that two parts are going to be destroyed. All right. Here in the land of Babylon, the great. All right. But there's going to be a remnant that is going to be delivered, that is going to be healed. All right. Verse 23. In that day, there shall be a highway out of Egypt to Assyria. All right. <laughs> and what is that talking about? OK, that's deliverance, man. All right. That's a, a way out. And it's through Yahweh Shai. OK, he, he like Jacob's ladder. All right. That was uh, uh, Yahweh Shai, you know, our connection. All right. Uh, from the most high on earth. And we need that connection like never before, because these demons are getting ready to lose it. And that day there should be a highway out of Egypt to Assyria and the Assyrian shall come into Egypt. All right. This is northern and southern kingdom pretty much being brought back together, man, symbolically. But it's speaking of the Israelites who are gathered out of all of these particular places in captivity. All throughout the four corners of the earth, man. The Assyrian shall come into Egypt and the Egyptian into Assyria and the Egyptians shall serve with the Assyrians. OK, if this was speaking of the actual heathen, what, why in the hell is it just talking about Egypt and Assyria? And we just read a prophecy in Zechariah speaking, all right, of the position of the heathen, including the Egyptians specifically in the kingdom of heaven. And you can't say now that that's the Old Testament because so is this. OK, so the Egyptians serving with the Assyrians, man, these are the Israelites. All right. Coming out of captivity. All right. Northern and southern kingdom. All right. Uh, uh, being brought back together and right and placed in their land. OK. And that day shall Israel be the third with Egypt and with the Syria. OK. Even a blessing in the midst of the land, man. And that's sp speaking of the 144,000 in the large multitude. OK, because when you read Revelation, the. Uh, let's get it real quick. Revelation, the seventh chapter. Revelation, the seventh chapter. OK, this is the remnant here. OK, you have the 144,000. All right. But then you have a large multitude, all right, from all nations and kindreds and people and tongues. OK, these are Israelites. OK, who, according to prophecy, Ezekiel, the 36th chapter. All right. Who are going to be brought back to the Heavenly Father as well. Ezekiel. All right. 36 and 19. And I scattered them among the heathen and they were dispersed through the countries according to their way and according to their doings. I judged them. And when they entered into the heathen, whether they went, they profaned my holy name and they were likened them to the heathen. When they said to them, these are the people of the Lord and are gone forth out of his land. But I had pity for my holy name's sake. All right which the house of Israel profaned among the heathen, whether they went. OK, therefore, thus said the Lord. All right. Unto the house of Israel, thus said the Lord God, I will. I do not this for your sakes, O house of Israel, but for my holy name's sake, which you have profaned among the heathen. I will sanctify my great name, which was profaned among the heathen, which I have profaned in the which ye have profaned in the midst of them. And the heathen shall know that I am the Lord your God when I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes for I will gather you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your own land all right so the heathen are going to be separate we're going to be separated from the heathen we're going to be beamed up all right and placed back in our land man so we can establish order in the earth all right and that land isn't uh, even has to be uh, uh, rebuilt you see, according to prophecy. All right. So going back to Isaiah, the 19th chapter. OK, 
in that day shall Israel be the third, all right, with Egypt and with Assyria, even a blessing in the midst of the land. All right, let's get Isaiah the 14th chapter. Okay. Isaiah the 14th chapter and the first verse for the Lord will have mercy on Jacob. All right. And will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. And the strangers shall be joined with them and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. All right. Now this word strangers in the Hebrew. All right. Is gar. All right. Going back to Moses' son, all right, uh, uh, Garsham, all right, who was a uh, born in the land of Midian, all right. And he was a stranger in his, uh, he was a stranger. He was still a Levite, all right, but he was just born abroad, all right. His mother was a, a, a um, his mother was a um, Midianite, okay. But you see, Gar, it says sojourner. A temporary inhabitant, a newcomer, lacking inherited rights, all right, of foreigners in Israel, all right, though conceded rights, all right. And the scriptures say, all right, that, um, you know, through the blood of Yahweh, Ephesians, the second chapter, we're, we're brought back. OK, we're brought back to the heavenly father, man. OK, so this is speaking of the Israelites. OK, who was scattered, being joined with the 144,000, the, the house of Jacob, okay? Cleaving to the house of Jacob. This is not speaking of the natural heathen because the natural heathen are going to be possessed as servants and handmaids in this very chapter, all right? Now, vocab, I've seen him go to this to try to prove that all nations can be saved, but then the rest of it, he'll say, well, servants and handmaids and all of that, that happened, all right, uh, in the Persian captivity, that was fulfilled. You see how the these devils are absolutely wicked and evil and played out. <laughs> but if, I'm happy you all went into Isaiah the 19th chapter because it forces us, all right, to get sharp and get into these scriptures, all right. But now you've openly proclaimed you you like to go into the Old Testament. You see. Also, going back to Isaiah the 19th chapter, in that day. Shall Israel be the third? Let's look up this word third and find out where else it is used. All right, now the third. Really quick, if it comes up. Shalayasha. Shalayasha. All right, Shalayasha. All right. Original number, the third, the third part. Let's go to the book of, I believe, Zechariah, the 13th chapter. Hmm. Zechariah 13 and 8, and it shall come to pass that in all the land, say of the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die. But the third shall be left therein. The third is going to be left therein. And I will bring the third part through the fire. All right. And I will refine them as silver is refined. And I will try them as gold is tried. And they shall call upon my name and I will hear them. And I will say it is my people. And they shall say the Lord is my God. OK, this is speaking of the Israelites. OK, the, he said he's going to hear them. It's the same thing that is said in Isaiah, the 19th chapter, man. <laughs> I mean, I get it, you know, I mean, that is a, a hard saying, all right, and this is why brothers got to get these breakdowns, all right, so, you know, we're going through it again, the apostles and elders went through it uh, this weekend, okay, but um, this just get this understanding, because now the Christians are, they, 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 their old shenanigans have played out, John 3.16, and make them start at 14 when they bring out John 3.16. All right, the, the the they're looking foolish, telling people not to keep the laws. All right, so they they're, they're running out. You know this whole love thing. We're bringing out all of these points. Well, now lo and behold, okay, they bring up Isaiah the 19th chapter, which they got it from this dude, this ex Sakari fallout who went to vocab. Vocab wasn't asking about Isaiah the 19th chapter years ago. 
He got that from this Sakari fallout. Okay, which could be an agent. He's on runs to Sonetta TV, runs to Vocab Malone. What did what did you what did you gain from that? All right, clout. But at the end of the day, Satan is gonna jump on people to do these things, man. Okay, so this whole chapter is speaking of the Israelites, you know, being brought back to the heavenly Father, you know, in a, in a spiritual Egypt. Him delivering them out of that spiritual Egypt, man. All right, then it goes into a parable at the end that messes you all's heads up, and we love it. Okay, let's read this again, man. All right, Isaiah 19 and 24. And that day shall Israel be the third with Egypt and with Assyria, even a blessing in the midst of the land, because we're going to be brought back to our land. Okay, New Jerusalem. All right. Whom the Lord of uh, whom the Lord of hosts shall bless, saying, Blessed be Egypt, my people, and Assyria, the work of my hands, and Israel, mine inheritance. Okay, so Egypt, all right, and Assyria are symbolic of our people who are brought out of captivity. Again, let's go back to Revelation, the seventh chapter. Okay, after the 144,000, okay, you're gonna have. Let's read this again. Uh, after that 144, which is the tabernacle of David, is fulfilled, okay? Who That's who everything is going to go through. You know, Yahweh Shai and the 144 and the 12 are going to be at the head of that, all right? Everything is going to be restored to order through them under Yahweh Shai. That's going to be the fulfillment of the tabernacle of David on earth that is in, as it is in heaven. The government that's going to be established, okay? In verse 9, Says what? After this, I beheld and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the uh, lamb clothed in white robes. All right. Now, when you get this word for kindred, OK, because Christians like to jump to this one. All right. And it won't break down anything else in Revelation, the seventh chapter, but they'll jump to that. OK, because this word for kindred is Fula, okay? Fule, okay? It says in the New Testament, all the persons descending from one of the 12 sons of the patriarch Jacob, you see? And we know that according to Zechariah, the 10th chapter, okay, what did it say? Verse 8 I will hiss for them and gather them, for I have redeemed them, and they shall increase as they have increased and i will sow them among the people and they shall remember me in far countries and they shall live with their children and turn again out of a heathen like state and i will bring them again out of the land of egypt and gather them out of assyria and will bring them into the land of gilead and lebanon all right and will and place shall not be found for them all right let's read this in the nlt I mean, the point was, has pretty much been made. All right. Uh, I will bring them back from Egypt and I will gather them from Assyria. All right. And that's going to be in a physical sense and in a spiritual sense. OK, dealing with our people being gathered out of captivity, period. OK, because Egypt and Assyria were hardcore captivities for us. All right. And also physically, we have people in those lands. All right. But there's a spiritual Egypt, Egypt in prophecy that is really Babylon the Great. It says, and I will resettle them in Gilead and Lebanon until there is no more room for them all, man. Meaning we're going to we're going to increase, man, on a whole nother level, man. So, you know, that's that, you know, I mean, that's the breakdown. Um, again, you know, I would love to hear Christians break down this whole chapter. All right. I mean, uh, uh, you're going to go all the way off. We already know. But. um, Yeah, brothers got to be ready, you know, to. um, Cut these demons, but at the at the end of the day, to hell with vocab Malone, to hell with these heathen, to hell with these Christians, because they they they're wrong at the end of the day. All right. They're they're the ones w w wiggling around the earth like house flies, you know, coming up to the different Israelite camps. OK, at the end of the day. If, if we don't want to answer you, we're not going to answer you. All right. But 
we defend the gospel, all right, for the sake and edification of the elect. All right, so this chapter is not at all, okay, after we go through all of the scriptures and, and, and hear how the heathen are going to be our inheritance and this and that, and now all of a sudden the Egyptians and the Assyrians are going to be at one with the, with, with, with the Israelites in the kingdom. All right, what about the Edomite? All right, what about the Moabite? Okay, uh, Egypt and Assyria are going to be... Uh, um, at one with the uh, the Israelites in the kingdom. No, and we 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 cut that with Zechariah. All right, the twenty uh, fourth chapter, and the Lord talks about how He's going to take down the Assyrian, which is spiritually Esau, man. So I'm gonna leave it there. On to the next one, Shalom.